Well, the fig tree is so wonderful because it connects our work in Nepal, which is half a world away, to our local community here. Um, and in making those connections with the community, it allows us uh, to engage with the North American community via donations, um, with our nonprofit. It allows us to engage the local community in regards to fair trade with our business. Um, and I think it, it does so in a way that allows people to get involved with major issues with people in Nepal, but also builds connections around the issues that we're dealing with and, and recognizing that, you know, women's rights and economic justice, um, all these major issues that we're dealing with in Nepal through our work are also so present here. And so um, I think it really, through your, the Fig Tree's articles and the way it's presented in the community that it features, right, it, it allows this larger human family to be built, right? So these giant issues that are happening here in Spokane, in North America, are also happening in Nepal, and we're able to say, we're one and the same. We're, we're all fighting for a better world and working for a better, better world, and they're not so different from us. So. so fair trade is really about providing economic justice through, through trade. Uh, and so we're working with individuals in Nepal, which is uh, one of the poorest countries in the world, that um, with individuals who have extreme skills and capabilities, but don't necessarily have access to a market. Um, and so fair trade allows them to, through relationships of trust, um, to have a voice and have a seat at the table, um, which is all anybody really wants, right? Uh, to have to be respected for your work, to receive equal pay, to be um, trusted, to know that there's individuals who respect your choices. And again, I think it's hard for individuals to understand, um, to relate maybe to uh, what's going on in Nepal or um, to understand how, they, how their choices here in North America might impact individuals. Uh, in Nepal, individual, specifically people who are making the items that they're purchasing. Uh, and so th the fig trees really allowed us to have a constant conversation around that, which is so great because we live and operate here in Spokane. And so to be able to engage with our, our immediate community here on such a large and complicated issue as economic justice, um, the fig tree has been a, a wonderful platform for that. You know, when we, when we engage with people in conversations uh, face to face, oftentimes they don't, they don't know where Nepal is, you know, they might not be aware of, they might not have heard of it, you know, it's usually we enter those conversations, oh, do you know, you know, Mount Everest, oh, okay, like there's, um, they might not be totally aware of, one, where it's located, two, just the culture itself, and three, maybe the, um, the various struggles that are happening in a country that's developing so rapidly. Um, and so it's, it's, it's not always an easy engagement, right? I think it's, um, it's, and it's been wonderful though at that through the fig tree and the many articles that the fig tree has done to, um, to create those connections of like, no, these are, these are again are issues that we're, that we're all talking about. These people are very similar to us in so many ways. And as a consumer, you can make huge impact through the, a ver in a very simple way, and here's how. I mean, that's the ultimate benefit, and then through Kazuri. Um, and Conscious Connections, again, I think it's, um, we're Nepali-led in all of our programs in Nepal, which is so wonderful. Um, but so much of what we do at Conscious Connections is also North American facing, and really having those conversations about um, menstrual health, what does that look like? Providing education for girls um, and engaging individuals in those kind of things. And without the fig tree, we would have so, so much less of a platform and ability and a reach here in Spokane to have those conversations. I was an employee at Ganesh Mall for eight years and um, in that time I'd visited Nepal several times. Um, yeah, and it's, 
I'm excited. I think uh, it, it'll it'll it gives long-term life to it. It continues the work. It it ensures that all of the. I mean, we we work with over 600 people in Nepal. We provide work for over 600 people in Nepal, and so um, you know to allow for a transition that will ensure that continued work. So yes, we are seeing a generational shift happen with, with several of our uh, producer groups where uh, the children are now kind of taking on the businesses as their, as their parents retire, which has been really fun. I mean, it's interesting because they have very different, in general, they have very different experiences than their parents. Uh, many of them are you know, college educated, educated, many of them have left Nepal um, and kind of seen what the market looks like, seen what it means um, to participate in that market and kind of what the demand is and what the uh, just competition looks like. Um, and so they're able to come with very different um, ideas and I think uh, plans for where they want to go. But but it all benefits the same people, right? It all provides work for individuals who just want to send their kids to school. So, yeah.